the RTE Rugby Podcast, sponsored by Canterbury. See the new Irish men and women's rugby jerseys at canterbury.com. David, you're very welcome on to the RTE Rugby Podcast. Uh, thanks for taking the time out. Just before we get on to this uh, Ireland team and these November internationals, what are you up to these days? And, and how are you keeping fit to fit into this uh, heritage jersey that... At Canterbury are selling. <laughs> it was a bit of a struggle, all right, yeah. Um, but you know, I think it's probably the vintage. I'm, I'm coming to Canterbury are selling to. It's, it's it's probably a good fit. But um, yeah, look, I'm 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 working happily away with a company called Lights PT. So we we're involved in in, in managing quality in construction, and uh, we're also a bit of a software company too. On the back of that, um, involved in um, to quality, sustainability, and, and digitalization of, of of all things in construction. So very interesting space. Um, and a very interesting company. So I'm, I'm, I'm delighted with that move and, and with them two and a half years now um, and a great company to work for. So um, yeah, um, big shout out to them. But, um, and then, yeah, I suppose keeping fit, I don't know, trying to keep fit, uh, fighting a losing battle, but um, yeah, doing a bit of cycling, I suppose, a bit more during the summer. And, and I still like to, to go into the gym a bit, uh, maybe once or twice a week. Um, just, it's, it's as somebody said to me recently, it's it's more for headspace than anything, you know. I think I find it really, um, you know, just if, if I don't train for a few days, you know, you, you just get a bit cranky and a bit irritable and, and all those kinds of things. And you're just a bit more off form but um, and, and less energy. So, yeah, I, I like, to, like to get in there and, and, and generally feel much better after it. So, um, yeah, it's, it's a good way to, to, you know, I suppose to, to just get back on, on the path. But, um, yeah, uh, but yeah, so, so enjoying life, enjoying life. Three Very kids good. here in Limerick and uh, they're all off to school and, and that. But, um, yeah, it's, it's busy, but good times. Yeah, it's lovely when they go off to school. Um, <laughs> peaceful. But um, were you ever tempted, I think when you retired from rugby, you kind of moved straight out of the professional game. Were you tempted when you see the, the other guys, so many of your former teammates are now in kind of prominent positions and, Rog and Paulie and uh, Dennis Leamy now up, up in Leinster. So were you ever tempted to stay in the programme or was it always your intention to move away from rugby when, when your playing days ended? Um, yeah, no, always, always my intention to move away. Even as a player, you know, you do you do run that question past yourself um, early in my career, middle of my career. And I said never say never, but... Um, I just no. I I love playing the game. I absolutely loved it. I love getting the ball in my hand or whatever it was. You know that was that for me was was what rugby was about. And and um, I don't think certainly coaching wouldn't replace that. And I probably find it a bit hard to watch it and not be involved. Um, but also I think it's a bit of a calling. I think um, your your intensity in around the preparation and and you know, it's a lot of a lot of studying of the game. Um, and I probably wasn't too good at that. I did, I did a bit, but but I certainly wasn't. I wasn't one of the leaders in that space. Um, and I think you really need to be able to <clears throat> to focus in and and study the game and very in depth. And I think when I was a player, I I was probably guilty of just focusing on my own role a little bit too much. Um, uh, and that was probably one of the 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 nice things of retiring. I did a little bit of 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 um, commentating in that, and you get to see the game from a you know, uh, obviously the the full thirty players on the field and the full field, and and you get a much wider appreciation of it. Um, and uh, you, you, I I think that has been that has been pleasant. And um, but in terms of look, it's 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 a tough role, you know. Um, even just the day to days of it, um, it's a tough role. But also as a career, um, you know, it's it's very fickle. Um, you know, you, a lot of the times it can be, it can be luck with the players you have, and it might be down to your your own coaching skills. It might be just you know a bit of luck or fortune, um, and uh, you probably have to move around the world a bit. And uh, I suppose I'm, I, I've I've always liked staying at home. It's nice, nice to travel, but but always wanted to come home. And uh, yeah, I, I think that that life is uh, it is. That's why I think it's it's such a calling. You know, you have to uproot your family from time to time, and and um, that's it's 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 very much. Uh, a, a tough task in in, the, in that sense, but yeah, look, I'm, I, the guys seem to love it, and the guys who speak to that, you know, they're they're really fully into it, and, and always have been. They were always they were always hardwired that way, you know. But uh, yeah, I think uh, they, they, some fantastic Irish um, prodigies coming through in, in terms of of coaching. You know, you mentioned Raj and Bali there, and, and and Dennis Leamy, but you know, the Mike Prendergast as well down in France as well too. So you've you've a whole cohort of of, of coaches that. Um, you know that we we probably see in, in more prominent roles uh, in years to come in in Ireland. 
And, and Dennis wasn't the first former Munster man to go to Leinster by any means. Was there any slagging or was there any sneering going on between the two of you? I mean, he is obviously such a, a Munster legend and then to go up here and try to help Leinster out. Ah, he's doing great. And nah, no, not at all. I was, I, I was joking with the lads this morning. It's hard, hard to feel happy for him. But no, it was, it was, it really was a joke. You know, it's, it's great to see him doing well. And and uh, when you're out of the game, those, those, those uh, rivalries are a little bit less. You know, so yeah. it's good to see him doing that. And and uh, yeah, as you say, like a lot, of, a lot of monster guys. My brother included went up to Leinster. Yeah. You know, um, and and tried to entice me up at one stage, but um thankfully Decky Kidney was was there to to can put the arm around me and uh you know I think it was early in my career but um but yeah uh yeah look, I I think yeah Dennis is 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 he's always you know what he always was a really big thinker of the game and and had that appreciation I think he followed in the footsteps of Axel you know very similar mold and how they thought about the game and and um you know, quietly spoken, but but intense and 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 uh, you know thinkers of the game, and 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 Dennis is very much like that too. Very good. We might just move on to your area of expertise, um, and with the November internationals just on the doorstep, um, if I asked you for three names to put into an Ireland back row, I mean, there's so many guys there that are not in the mix, like Dan Levy, Connor Oliver. There's a Boyle in, over in Connacht, um, but there's seven or eight lads there in the squad now that can. Could, could be worth their place, but if I had to give you um, three spots, who, who would you write down? Look, I think for me, uh, seven would be Josh van der Fleer. He's just, he's upped his game, I'd say 15, 20%. Certainly his attack game um, massively in the last couple of years. And I think, I know probably a lot of kudos was given to Paul, but, you know, and the rest of the coaches, but getting him to focus a bit more on that side, because, you know, it, to be a complete player and back row that you, you do need to have that and he was probably he's a machine getting around the field in terms of his intensity and his and and his his work rate but we'd see now he's actually a really really good carrier as well too and he's growing in confidence and he knows now that he, he can do it at the highest level and uh any end of that's another string to his bow but yeah i think for me he's he's a, he's the first name in there I'd, I'd i'd love to see uh gavin coombs i just think he's he's phenomenal um he's a player who who uh who can get yards when no one, no other player can, and uh, for me, especially at international level, that just puts you on the front foot when when you know those yards are harder to come by. And and uh, I think he's he's a unique talent. And and for me, I just you know I think he should have a dozen caps at this stage. You know, um, I think he's got he's got two at the moment. But um, yeah, there's always the talk of maybe Ty Byrne going in there. But um, yeah, I, I think probably Caelan Darris as well too is, is probably maybe going in, going to go at six and, and maybe have Ty in, in the second row. I don't know. But yeah. um, it's certainly there's plenty of choice um, in terms of back row and, and second row. Um, and, you know, there's a few guys there can can interchange. So I think we're in a strong position uh, there, certainly. And uh, we always have been, I think, in the back row, but it's, it's, it's even stronger at the moment. Um, uh, but I do think Gavin Coombs kind of breaks the mold from from a lot of the other players. He's he's a different type of player and probably one that we need at international level. You know, when you when you're in those tough positions and you, we've we've all seen days where Ireland have just really struggled to get over that game line against a strong defence who's, who's on top of you, and uh, he's a guy who who can do that and maybe break, you know have that X factor where you you just break that link. And suddenly there's a, there's a chink and you get through and you get you get a hand you know hand off or something like that, um, or sorry you get an offload and 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 you're away. But um, he's he's he for me he's, he's uh, I'd love to see a lot of him um, because we're going to need you know really strong squad this year in particular. You know you look at the matches we have with Japan, we've, with New Zealand, and Argentina, but then you go away to France and England. And then you've you've three matches against New Zealand, um, you know. So the next, it's it's not a year, you know. It's next how many months? It's it's probably eight months, seven months, yeah. is it? Um, where you just they're they're going to be under the pump, and then you have to obviously throw in the, those uh, provincial matches as well, those club matches w- along with that. So we are going to need real strength and depth, and um, and I think certainly we we we, we seem seem to have that, and it's good to see that the provinces are are, are humming away at the moment. They're, they seem to be on form. Yeah. I can see the headlines there already, David. Uh, Wallace omits Lions starting uh, number eight from Ireland squad. Um, yeah, well, look, I, I don't know. Yeah, Jack Conan is, is obviously he's, he's a fantastic athlete as well too, and and of course if, if he if he is selected, which he most likely will be selected, uh, to be honest. Um, but uh, I, yeah, I think 
I think I suppose I, 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 need, I was backing up my monster, monster, uh, yeah. not, not teammate, but yeah, brethren. Um, but yeah, look, I think Jack obviously, had, you know, did amazing on the Lions tour as well too, and and and, and to make him and also in the Test team. Um, but you know, he's a different type of player as well too. And I'm, look, he'll obviously get his game time too, and and there's no doubt about that. Um, but for me, I'd like to see more of of, of Gavin Coombe. So you know, even if it was fifty fifty, you know, um, o- over the two games, I'd love to see that. I think that's probably more the point I'm trying to make. Yeah. Yeah. And last week, Andy Farrell spoke about daring to dream, and he was talking about the World Cup in a way that maybe the previous coach didn't talk about it so far out. In your day, was that how far out was were people mm-hmm. talking about it seriously about plans and structures that they'd like to have in place um, for the campaigns that you were involved in? Um, I think at a coaching level, you, the Irish coaches will be thinking that far ahead. In in terms of of players, look, they've. They, I know it's, it's the old uh, that old cliche. It's, it's the next match, you know. So you, you're you're flipping between. Well, my my early days were going from club to province to to that international. To, you know, hopefully it went further than that as well too. But um, you. Uh, yeah, you, you, you're you're pretty much focused on what's ahead. Of you. You're trying to learn learn the calls. So like when you when you start a season, there's going to be new calls. So you think in September, you know, they're all getting used to new calls and, and whatnot. And, and then uh, you're just nailing those down. And you look at some of the players have had very little time, so they're coming from that. And, and uh, next, suddenly they're they're thrown into the Irish setup. You have a new a new way of doing things anyway. Every, every time, every campaign, because they'll tweak around. Coaches will be looking that far ahead, but players will be coming in, and they'll have some ideas. But you know, it's it's a very very narrow period just to get well, you know, up to speed on learning the calls and then doing them. You know, yeah. to to your best because uh, you always you always struggle on the field at times with new calls and that because you're thinking about what you should be doing rather than how you should be doing it. Um, and obviously, when you when you get when it becomes second nature, you know, towards the end of a campaign, middle of a campaign, you know, that's when you really start firing. But unfortunately, then that, that last three or four weeks, like in November, and then you're back to your club, and you'd be yeah. surprised. Maybe it was just me, but you have forgotten so much of what you learned in September to yeah. October, and you're actually picking, trying to relearn it again. It's it's a little bit fresher, a bit muscle memory and whatever in there, but brain memory. But uh, you'd be surprised how much because. You know, uh, it 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 just you're 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 playing the sport in in a different language almost. You know, yeah. so you have to go back to learning that that new language, and and there's always a, always a bit of joking and messing when um, Irish players come back to the provinces and they call, you know, because there'll be similar calls, but they'll call yeah. it by the Irish term, and they <laughs> just suddenly get brought back to to where they're you know, thinking they're they're above their station and all that, you know. But uh, um, but yeah, no, it's, it's 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 I think for players, it's 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 really you know kind of the three four. Maybe six stations that's a bit longer, you know. Yeah. And finally, I might just ask you, you've played against New Zealand seven times from what I can see on your list. It, it always seems like a you special don't need, game. You don't need to tell me the win-loss ratio there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I won't bring that up. But um, it always seems like a special game from the outside um, that the whole world is kind of looking on whoever New Zealand are playing. What What did you notice coming out of those games? What What did it have that's extra? Ah, uh, Look, I think for me growing up, you know, it, the whole spice around with the hacker you know that was just for me i remember watching the, the hacker in in musgrave park and you know uh, down your 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 pitch side you know as, as it was then and you're you're up against the wall and you're you're meters away from this going on and I, you know something i'd only seen on tv and, and it was just such a thrill to to witness um and you know i think you know people give out about it and you know is it is a bit of an unfair advantage and things like that but I look. I just. I think it's it's a great challenge to other teams as well. And other teams, you know, ask any player in world rugby. They want to face that hacker. It's something special. And um, you know, I think that whole aura begins there. Uh, look, look. Plus, just the way they play the game. Um, you know, we, we saw it against Wales. You know, they're a joy to watch. Um, and uh, you know, if if I was if I agnostic on it all, you know, I'd certainly be a New Zealand supporter. Um, but yeah, they're 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 the biggest challenge, you know. Invariably, they're the biggest challenge you you'll face in, in world rugby, and you want to you want to test yourself against the best. But um, obviously, you know, the, we've had a couple of good wins, and and the confidence would be a bit better than maybe in my day. We were close close a couple of times. We 
we won one match we were what 19-7 up at half time and uh, unfortunately didn't didn't end too well but um, you know there were there were days out there that you, you were close and they might get a there was one game in New Zealand where it was, it was they won by maybe a try or 10 points and it was very close for, for most of that game as well yeah. Um, but yeah you just want to test yourself against the best and and, uh, and I think that that week against New Zealand is, is like no other you know it really is there's a special buzz around the place um and uh yeah it'll it'll be it'll be tougher for New Zealand too because you know I think playing in a bubble is 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 hard uh you know speaking to some of the Lions guys you know that was a tough tour you know it's you're always in a bubble anyway in sport but uh it was you know when you don't have that release of just being able to leave the hotel and, and also you have that that angst of you know not not being the one to bring COVID into the camp etc you know it's a pressurized environment anyway without throwing that on top of it and have, not having the release so you know I think by the time we New Zealand come here you know maybe they might be suffering a little bit and maybe cling to something there but um but yeah I think it, it's going to be a special game too yeah and the Japan game is actually going to be a, a great for us in terms of learn to, to deal with that offloading game and and how you defend that and, 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 and I mean not learning but, but getting attuned to it you know Smashing. Listen, David, thanks very much for your time and joining us on the RT Ruby podcast and enjoy the rest of the, the November internationals. Brilliant. Thanks, Michael. All the best. The RTE Rugby Podcast, sponsored by Canterbury. See the new Irish men and women's rugby jerseys at canterbury.com.